Hey everybody, this is Mr. Storm, and in this video, uh, this video series, actually, I want to cover one of my favorite topics, which is Canvas. Now, um, this first video is going to be mainly for new people who have never used Canvas before, or maybe haven't used Canvas in the UMA context. So if you're a new teacher, uh, this is a good video for you to watch. If you have already taught using Canvas at UMA, you probably can skip this video. In this video, I'm really just going to explain what Canvas is and how to sign into Canvas and how to troubleshoot some of those pesky login issues that you may see with students from time to time. Uh, so if you're experienced, I'll see you in the next video. If you're new, uh, you know, keep paying attention. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, let's talk about what Canvas is um, in general. Okay, so Canvas is a learning management system. Uh, what that means is that this is a platform that will allow you to deliver all of your content, and by all I really do mean all of your content, to your students online. Um, it's extremely easy to use. Uh, it, it is very feature heavy, meaning it has a lot of different options for you to, uh, to explore. Um, and it has somewhat of a steep learning curve, but hopefully these videos can help you figure all this stuff out and it doesn't become too daunting. Okay, so because Canvas is an online tool, we need to be online in order to access it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, Google Chrome here. And the nice thing about Canvas being online is that you don't have to be on a specific computer in order to use it. As long as you have an internet connection, you can get access to all of your learning materials. So for example, I have my computer in my classroom and I can manipulate stuff here. But then when I go home, I can use a different computer to just jump right in and keep doing work. Um, so now that I'm online and I have a web browser open, there are a couple ways I can get to our UMA Canvas. The best way, however, and this is the way I would teach your students to use, the best way would be to go to utahmilitaryacademy.org, right? utahmilitaryacademy.org. Now, because I've already indicated to the UMA website that I am a Hillfield teacher, it will not give me the option to choose between Hillfield or um, Viper Flight or not Viper Flight, but um, Hillfield or the South Campus. But if I was to, yeah, it's still going to do it. Anyway, so this is what the website looks like for the Hillfield Campus. If you're in the uh, Lehigh Campus, it'll look slightly different. Um, but these buttons should be in the same place. The button you're looking for is called Portals. And when you hover over that, you will see a link to Canvas. When you click that, it will take you to the Canvas page for Utah Military Academy. Now, it's very important that you understand that the way we log into Canvas is unique, right? Um, when you think about logging into an online system, you might think about, hey, I have to put in a username and a password and then click login and then it takes me directly into the system. That is not how Canvas works. We've set up Canvas so that it's linked directly to your UMA email address. Right? Um, so your e UMA Google account is going to be how you get access to the course. So when I go to Canvas, it pops up this Google uh, account chooser page and I can just click on the Google account that I'm using. Now notice I have my personal Google account here. Uh, that's my personal email. If you guys want to shoot me a personal email, I don't ever check it. This is mainly for like online ordering forms and stuff. This is my junk mail email. Anywho, um, if I click on my personal email, it's going to give me this error, meaning this is not configured for my user. This is basically saying, hey, you cannot log in to Canvas using this user account, right? Students are going to see this error a ton if they're at home, because what most people do is they use Google Chrome and they use their default Google Chrome browser sign in as their uh, they, they use their personal email as their default Google Chrome uh, uh, profile. If they do not sign out of their default, um, then it's going to try to automatically sign them in uh, using their personal email address, which is not appropriate and it won't work. So if they get this 403 error, um, that means they need to sign out of all of their accounts and then go back to the UMA web page uh, and click the Canvas button. So let's go ahead and do this again. 
Now, what I instruct students to do, if they keep having this error, I tell them, okay, log into your email address. So go to mail.google.com and then log in there to your UMA email address. And then, without closing out that tab, open up a new tab, go to the UMA webpage, click on Canvas, and it should take you right in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Ooh, one more thing about logging in. Some uh, students are going to forget these steps. They're going to say, hey, I can't remember how to log into Canvas. So what do I normally do when I can't find a website? I go to Google. So I'm going to go to a Google uh, page here, and I'm going to search Canvas login. And it's going to take me to this canvas.net forward slash login. I'm going to click on that. And it's going to take me to this page. Oh, okay. I'm going to put in my email address and my password, and that should work. This does not work. Okay, this is, this is not the appropriate way to sign in. This will not work for you or for your students. You have to go through the UMA website in order to get access to the UMA Canvas page. If your students come up to you and this page is open on their computer and they say, hey, I can't log in. I don't know what's going on. It keeps giving me this, this error. I know I have an account and I'm freaking out and I'm stressed. And I'm going to fail all my classes. Just calm down. You just click the wrong thing. Uh, just show them again how to go to Utah Military Academy, click on portals, go to Canvas. Okay, so that should handle any login issues you may be having. Uh, anything more advanced than that, just uh, let me know. Send me an email. Um, there are some issues, especially in the beginning of the year with new students, where their, their email accounts haven't been generated yet, and so they may not be able to log into Canvas the first couple of days. Those issues we can handle. So just let me know if you have those kinds of issues. Okay, so I'm going to click on my email account that's attached to my UMA profile. And it's going to bring me into this, uh, this page. Okay, this is your Canvas dashboard. And by default, your, uh, when you log into Canvas, you will be sent to the dashboard. Um, your students will also have a dashboard of all the classes that they are in. Um, so whenever they come into the dashboard, they will see the classes that they are enrolled in on this dashboard here. For teachers, you will see a separation between published courses and unpublished courses, right? In order for students to see your class, even if they're enrolled, right, you can have a class that's fully built and have a bunch of students enrolled in the class. They still will not be able to see this course until you click publish. Once you click publish, it will move this class up to here and your students will be able to click on it and see it. Okay, very quickly, I just want to go over these buttons over here and what they do. Um, so uh, over here, we have account. You can see your account name. You can go through their bunch of settings. You can go into notifications. I would highly recommend changing your notification settings so that you don't get emails every single day, right? Um, you can go in here and organize. Hey, I want, uh, I want notifications on grading, but I don't want notifications on submissions, right? So that's what I've done. I, I don't want notifications notifications on, on grading um, or on late submissions uh, or submissions at all because then your email account will just be flooded with uh, you know emails saying, hey, my students have turned in assignments or this student turned in this assignment, right? I also turned off notifications for discussions, but hopefully you can see there are a lot of different options here. And you can choose between give me them or um, I'm not even sure what that is. Let's see, what's the... Oh, send daily summary or send weekly summary. So you can you can choose summary. So that's a daily, that's a weekly summary. Um, which one did I change? Um, yeah, uh, these settings don't look like they've saved from last year. So even if you're a, 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 an experienced teacher, you may want to go in here and change the settings. It looks like Canvas updated their system. I normally have all this stuff turned off, and I will do that later. Anyway, so there's notifications, files. You can see all the files that you have attached to your um, to your Canvas account, um, which I have a ton of different classes and all the stuff, and so I have a bunch of different files. Um, anyway, yeah, so all these are great. You can also generate a QR code so you can log in on your mobile device. Canvas has uh, separate uh, mobile applications for teachers, students, and parents. So if you download the teachers app, then you can actually manage and modify and organize and see all of your courses on your smartphone. Uh, it's pretty handy. 
Okay, you won't see admin because you won't be an admin in Canvas, most likely. If you click Dashboard, that'll take you back to the dashboard, obviously. If you click Courses, it will pull up a list of courses that you have. It'll have your published and unpublished. And then you can click All Courses, which will take you to a list of all of the courses you've ever created in Canvas and all the courses that have ever been created for you in Canvas, linked to this account. I can click All Courses and I can scroll all the way back to 2016 and see courses that I've made there. You can also click Calendar which will show you the calendar of events that you have coming up. For teachers, this is what assignments in your classes are due on what date, and you can actually organize it by courses um, here, just by clicking on the button and it'll organize it. Um, you can also see your inbox, which I'm not sure if I have any recent messages. Okay, so you can see your inbox. I just have messages from students asking me about certain things in the class from last uh, last school year. Um, Commons is a button that you may want to look at as well. Uh, Commons will bring you to the Canvas Commons where you can see other published courses by other teachers and you can sort them by subject and you can take a look at um, you know those courses and see how they're structured. Now later on in this series I'm going to go over my preferred method for organizing your courses in Canvas so that it's easy for students and parents to understand what um, what content is available to them and what content is due at what time. So we're going to go over a essentially kind of like a UMA style guide for how to build your your courses. But in here in in Commons you have a ton of stuff like um, you know there's full modules, there's full courses, there are things like uh, individual assignments, uh, there are pages, um, there, there's all kinds of stuff. There's quizzes and you can just pull those from these courses if you want. Okay, um, and then you have a help option. You have a help button where you can go in here and report problems or look for specific issues. Uh, there's this COVID-19 Canvas resources, which has tips for teaching and learning online. This is pretty good. You may want to take a look at that if you're feeling a bit uh, overwhelmed. Uh, let's see. And then we can minimize that so that it, you know, it makes it look a little bit cleaner. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the dashboard and let's talk about some options you'll see here in the dashboard. I'm almost done with uh, this video and then we will get into a, a greater tour of a Canvas course in a later video. Over here you have another link to your calendar. You also have your coming up and recent feedback uh, sections. What this does is this allows you to see which assignments are uh, have been turned in and are waiting for you to grade. Um, this is extremely helpful. My normal workflow for a week is when I'm sitting during a prep period and I want to grade a bunch of assignments, I'll come into Canvas, I'll look on my dashboard, and I'll find any assignment that's listed in here, and I'll just click on it and go right in there and start grading it. Um, this organizes my grading workflow extremely well, and it, it allows me to cut down my grading time exponentially. Um, so you'll have a, an itemized list of everything that you need to do in this coming up section. Uh, recent feedback, that'll be if you receive feedback from a student on an assignment. Like let's say you're having a conversation about a student turning an assignment, you mark them down on this thing, you give them ex an explanation, they you know, they want to uh, you know, push back on that. This will be your conversations that you have with students in here. You can also start a new course from here. If you click the start a new course, it'll create a brand new course down here in your unpublished courses, and it'll be a new course from the very beginning. Now, at UMA, your courses will be generated for you um, once the school year starts, and so you'll have a bunch of classes that are generated for you. What I do is I always have a template for the course that I know I'm going to teach, and then I work inside that template, and when I'm ready, I export or I import that course into the course that's generated for me by UMA. And the next video will explore how to do that. Um, you can also click View Grades. Now, as a teacher, you may be thinking, why would I ever want to do this? Well, what this does is it allows you to go in and look at the classes that you have, and it allows you to see what the grades are for that specific class. Um, and you can look at just average grades for, um, for that course itself which is pretty great. Okay, um, that'll be about it uh, for this video. 
Um, hopefully this helped you understand a little bit about how to log into Canvas and what it is. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about how to export or import content into a class. So uh, I will see you in that next video. Uh, thanks for paying attention, and I will see you next time.